Hi, and welcome to chapter 14. Um, some good stuff in here. Unfortunately, there's a ton of Freud, but uh, you expect to get Freud in a fundamentals of psychology course. So you're, you're getting Freud. The opening vignette is about Phineas Gage, and I have some links uh, relevant to him. I've actually uh, seen his skull and the tamping iron live at a Harvard museum. And it's pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, we'll come back to him in a bit. And um, The, uh, we've been talking about personality types for a very uh, long time. Um, someday I should read a translation of Gilgamesh. And uh, I didn't know about his friend and Ki Kidu uh, bromance movies. They were a good combination of here, apparently. Um, personality types here from Galen, uh, the four humors. Uh, this was popular for a while. Galen, of course, was a major figure in thinking about uh, medicine and how the, the body's uh, body work. Uh, nobody really, th these terms are part of uh, common English, but uh, we don't um, talk about four humors anymore. Uh, bloodletting was popular even after the American Revolution. Uh, George Washington was dying, and uh, what probably helped him along was his physician bled him uh, to make him feel better. Uh, that doesn't work. Astrology. Um, the first edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, which was a very big deal when I, not the first edition, but the Encyclopedia Britannica was a very big deal for me in my youth. My parents had a set and I decided I would read the whole thing. That didn't work out. But um, the first edition of the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica called Astro uh, Astrology a uh, long ago debunked or rejected uh, Babylonian belief system. Um, and yet we find astrology columns uh, virtually everywhere. Um, I'm, I'm glad they still don't show up, uh, as far as I know, in either the New York Times or the Washington Post, uh, which uh, I read. The um, talk about correlation and causation and cognitive biases uh, in uh, in human perception. Um, Hitler apparently was big on astrology, which our side used uh, against him. Uh, they tried to figure out what his astrologer was telling him so that we would uh, have some idea of uh, what he might be up to. Um, there was a uh, television program. Uh, a while ago where people with paranormal abilities, including astrologers, uh, I forget how much they would get, um, you know, $10,000 check or something, if they could do anything. Uh, and, you know, they, they had to have an agreement before the show about how they would be tested for their abilities. And the astrologer said, well, you, you pick uh, 12 people uh, from the studio audience uh, in the heart of their astrological signs 
I'll interview them asking, you know, about their likes and dislikes and stuff. And I will predict um, what astrological sign uh, they were. I forget how many he had to get right to, to win the check. And uh, the 12 people were positioned in front of 12 signs and the camera panned them. And then the, uh, the, uh, uh, the host said, okay, if you're in front of the, the appropriate sign, stay there. If you're not, move uh, to where you should be. 12 out of 12 were standing in the wrong location. He didn't win. Neither did water dowsers or prophetic dreams or uh, predicting cards. Uh, nothing worked. Uh, yeah, but people still believe in this stuff. And um, there are some things that go into, you know, why we believe this. Uh, confirmation bias, subjective validation. Uh, this is also why some people continue to believe in uh, conspiracy theories. Um, the concept of cherry picking uh, comes up uh, here where you, uh, you selectively uh, choose data that support your uh, your position uh, subjective uh, so confirmation bias uh, remembering events uh, that fit your preconceptions and dismiss or forget events that do not subjective validation the four error effect the tendency to pick out specific uh, accurate meaning from an open-ended vague personality description uh, there was another program where they uh, it's it's referred to in here, where the the, same, the uh, students in a class were all given the exact same uh, astrological assessment, and then asked to uh, rate how uh, well it described them, and uh, yeah, it was vague. Sometimes you're nervous, but sometimes you're outgoing. And uh, the students loved it. And then they uh, were asked to pass uh, their uh, assessment to the person uh, behind them or something in class. And they were all, uh, to see that they were all given uh, the same um, astrological uh, assessment. Uh, so, I mean, there, there are no data uh, supporting the accuracy of astrology, and yet people swear by it. I, I have to see it on my Facebook feed all the time. Uh, and here's our uh, mega dose of uh, Freud and uh, psychoanalysts. Uh, Freud was a physician, and... Um, Psychiatrists in the United States used to be taught this stuff uh, pretty uh, intensively. Some of my students who went to med school were just shocked at uh, the degree to which they were taught psychoanalytic theories. That's uh, much less uh, true today. Uh, unconscious, unconscious. Uh, Pre-conscious, which isn't in the figure we're about to see, uh, which would be long-term memory information, you have pretty easy access to, but um, it's not in your conscious uh, mind right away. Um, Freud is a big believer in the unconscious, and there's his, well, it's not his figure, but that's a... Uh, the graphic representation of uh, Freud's theory, the three major uh, components of the uh, of personality, ego, superego, and id, and you're in an ocean, and sometimes there are storms and waves. Uh, the, the id rarely, if ever, gets out. Um, ego is what I'm talking to now. Uh, 
Freud's term for the part of the uh, mind that tries to fulfill the goals of the id within the limits of reality, superego. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, the often the moral be beliefs of your uh, of your society filtered through your parents, <clears throat> defense mechanisms. These are very popular. Uh, the uh, oh, I, I missed the id. Id's uh, part of the brain that follows, or part of the personality that follows the uh, pleasure principle. And there's a whole table of defense mechanisms uh, on the next uh, on the next page. And you can see that Gage uh, shows up here. Um, Freud was uh, a well-trained physician, uh, but he kind of went off the rails. Um, so we have a whole table of defense mechanisms here. Uh, there's the term down the left side, and not all of them, but most of them are used in common English. And then there are examples Neurosis is a term we don't uh, use very much uh, anymore. Although we, yeah, we we do sometimes say <clears throat> that people are neurotic, um, and that defense mechanisms can um, suppress memories. And there's Elizabeth Loftus again, uh, who did important work in uh, in memory and memory recall and false memories. And here we go with the psychosexual stages of development. And <clears throat> table 14.2, there are your stages, oral, anal, phallic, latent, and genital, uh, the approximate ages, uh, what you have to learn in each uh, stage, um, and uh, what happens if it's unresolved. And the uh, particularly the anal, anal explosive, anal uh, retentive. Um, you can be either uh, overly messy or overly neat. So a hallmark of Freud is uh, he's the smart guy. He can tell you what's true. He can figure things out. But in terms of uh, coming up with a testable theory, uh, not so much. So then there's a discussion of the oral stages, uh, which go along with the, with the, uh, with the table, the Oedipal complex will come up here. So, and they're described in, you know, oral anal phallic <clears throat> over there on the left. And there's the Oedipal complex, uh, Shakespeare, uh, Oedipus and, uh, Sometimes they talk about the Electra complex. Um, this is a very dark theory. Uh, I went to grad school with uh, a pair of parents uh, that were uh, psychoanalytic and Freudian, and we were at a party in this giant mansion, uh, stone walls. <laughs> it was like a movie set. And uh, their child was screaming uh, in a crib, just screaming, and people went in uh, to comfort the kid, and the parents were so angry because they, uh, by comforting the child, we had disrupted uh, the development of the child's ego and the ego's ability to deal with reality. Uh, whatever happened to that kid? Uh, you know, latency after you have your near-death experience with your Oedipal or Electra complex, and he, he meant that pretty literally, uh, you, you chill out uh, for several years and then you emerge as hopefully a well-balanced uh, adult genital stage, the final phase, uh, when the focus is on the penis and vagina, developing a mature, socially acceptable sexual relationship. Um, Freud was also, yeah, right there, a particular failure of Freud's conjectures concerns homosexuality. Uh, 
this uh, you know training that uh, mercifully uh, states and countries are now beginning to ban to you know train homosexuals to be heterosexuals. Uh, there are no data that that works, and sexual uh, orientation or is uh, one of Mark Breedlove's strengths. He really knows stuff. Uh, there's a family where the, if there's a birth order effect, uh, it's going to be there. Um, and uh, there's a discussion, a discussion of that and the fact that fa family size is rarely factored into the analysis. Uh, it should be done more uh, uh, creatively. So birth order effect the hypothesis that order of birth uh, affects each child's personality. And there's, you know, discussion here about astronauts, but um, I mean, I'm a firstborn and uh, I came from a family with uh, two children, uh, which uh, the book uh, points out. And then, you know, you, you pay a fortune and talk to Freud uh, sometimes twice a week very expensive, very long-term therapy, uh, the kind of therapy that really only wealthy people uh, could afford to do. Uh, free association, lists of words, and you say what you think, and Freudian slips, and uh, Freud sits there and thinks about what you say and then figures out what you meant. By the way, when Freud did therapy with people, he didn't write anything down. He just sat there being Freud. Uh, and after you left, he wrote things down. So, uh, you know, what he did was very prone to reinforcing his own uh, biases. Um, dream analysis. I mean, that, the, the Bible did uh, dream analysis. Uh, Joseph and the Pharaoh. Um, and again, you know, you have these dreams, you don't know what the, they, uh, they mean. Don't worry about it. Come in for your next therapy session. Explain them to Freud, and Freud will see through your defense mechanisms and tell you what's really going on. He really thought a lot of himself. Uh, he did have a fertile mind. Uh, he did have a fertile mind. Uh, projective tests, uh, sometimes deriving from uh, Freudian theory. Uh, the data on these are very weak, but uh, some types of therapists still use them. Uh, Rorschach ink plot. Uh, there's a book that I've given you a link to. Sorry, it's Father's Day, I'm getting emails. So, um, House of Cards, the uh, author here spoke at the University of Scranton. House of Cards, psychology and psychotherapy built on myth. Um, very powerful book, uh, uh, Robin Dawes. And um, he was, he had some, some words to say about uh, Rorschach tests. Uh, there's something, I don't know if, if Dawes wrote it or someone else wrote it, but it was written for the state of Pennsylvania saying that if you're you know, in a custody battle or your freedom is based on the interviews you're dealing with and someone comes at you with a Rorschach test, just get up and uh, leave the room. And the uh, TAT, thematic apperception test, uh, also, uh, you know, these things are not very reliable. And if they're not reliable, their ability to be valid is very weak. Um, but they're, they're part of this tradition that uh, therapists sometimes uh, uh, are still caught up in. And yeah, there we go. We're shock. Um, what are the projective projective tests? 
is uh, is definitely uh, questioned. Um, it's it's largely a black hole of time and money. Humanistic uh, psychology, a theory that challenges psychoanalytic by emphasizing free will and our ability to play a conscious, active role in shaping our own behavior. Uh, Carl Rogers, uh, I liked him. Um, Rogerian psychotherapy, method of treatment, focusing on the client's goals, offering a non-judgmental form where the client can problem solve with the, the therapist's uh, cooperation. And there are empirical data supporting uh, that uh, Rogerian psychotherapy is uh can be effective not for all things uh but uh definitely for some things and now modern personality uh research and i've done uh some research involving uh some of these tests uh trying to relate them to facial structures um so we, we now look at traits uh not personality types uh jung comes up and uh this is well thought of he talked about extroverts and introverts and uh that's still uh something that's part of personality theory uh to this very day and there's uh Ising's two-factor theory of personality so you have the orange introverts who are at the high end of the normal distribution and extroverts, which are at the low end of the normal distribution. Um, so that's internally generated arousal. And then notice up on top, you have optimal level. So if you want to get to the optimal level, introverts don't have far to go. So they don't have to do anything too zany, uh, but extroverts, you really you really have to bump them and when you uh bump the world of an extrovert to optimal uh if you were carrying along an in introvert on that same transmit uh transition they would not be happy uh certainly into the anxiety zone and possibly into the uh panic zone and um isaac has more uh uh, empirical support, certainly than Freud. And um, neuroticism uh, comes up uh, here again. Uh, people who are unusually distressed over things. Uh, emotional instability. Uh, not, neuro not neurotic, neuroticism. And um, the... Uh, this is still part of uh, personality tests. So there's Isaacs on the uh, left. You have uh, neuroticism uh, stable at the bottom and unstable at the top, and then extroversion, uh, introversion, introversion at the far left, uh, extroversion at the far right. And if you only look at the corners, you have reliable, even tempered, moody, anxious, rigid, touchy, restless, aggressive, easy, easygoing, lively, and carefree. So um, I don't think it's common to do an Ising test, but these concepts are still part of the uh, uh, personality traits uh, that are, are well supported. Uh, how many traits are there? So this is very clever. Um, uh, the uh, Allport uh, found that uh, language has too many words, 4,000. Uh, Cattell, uh, he did a factor analysis, uh, which is a way of simplifying a data set. So you have 4,000 traits. And you ask the uh, statistics to tell you, well, do any of these cluster together? 
And if they cluster together, then you can sort of turn them into only one thing. And um, the uh, Cattell did research. Uh, he boiled it down to 170 and he kept going. And then he came up with the 16 source traits. Um, and there's the trait down the middle and how you end up if you're low and how you end up if you're high. Um, and this is more, this is empirically based uh, uh, where he got these, although no, almost nobody uh, still tries to score uh, 16 traits. Uh, we have focused on the five factor model, and that's what I've done uh, my research with. And uh, there's an easy uh, term to remember the five factors, ocean, and there they are depicted over here, openness, imaginative, seeks variety, uh, conscientiousness, organized, extroversion, sociable, and of course these are continuums. So there are other, uh, the other extremes are, uh, of the continuum are down below, agreeable, soft-hearted, uh, soft-hearted, trusting, helpful, and there's neuroticism, anxious, insecure, and moody. Um, and these have been heavily, heavily, heavily uh, researched, and uh, they hold up. Uh, you know, they're not magical, but uh, they they certainly hold up. And uh, there they are described. I'm very impressed that your author uh, uh, took uh, a modern uh, personality inventory. Uh, the Neo PIR. Uh, it, it's a pretty big test. And uh, it's standardized. And it's, uh, it's reliable and pretty valid. Um, and there's your author. Uh, gutsy thing to do, Mark. Um, he's open high and open, low on conscientiousness, and about average on extroversion, agreeableness, and uh, uh, neuroticism. Um, the big five tests uh, are the big five tests reliable and valid, uh, unlike the projective tests, which are not, uh, are quite reliable. And uh, there's a graph on the next page. Not the next page, the next page after the next page. Uh, why did I highlight this? Mike and uh, uh, your author and I seem to be the same people. Uh, he admits, I've always had many ADHD characteristics, <clears throat> but I never sought a diagnosis. I was an absent mind. I was an absent minded. I was very absent minded long before I became an absent minded professor. I developed coping strategies, pocket calendars, reminders. Uh, I didn't meet all my obligations or deadlines, not because I didn't care, but because I didn't remember. Uh, open minus and low conscious anxiousness uh, are typical in stand up comic uh, comics. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, that uh, I meet those same definitions, but I don't, I don't have the guts uh, to be tested, even with the NEO-PI. Um, and there's some results. Uh, How many possible combinations of personality traits uh, can we have? Uh, lots and lots. Um, some tests are designed to screen for psychological disorders, MMPI. Uh, I forget whether I was uh, asked to take that when uh, my, my ex-wife was uh, in training. I, I don't remember it, so I'm, I'm guessing I didn't. 
uh, but the uh, widely used personality tests are originally designed to screen for psychological disorders. This is still uh, well used and, you know, reliability and validity are, are pretty good. Uh, clinical scales uh, intended to detect different psychological problems. And he took the test, Mark. Um, so he was high on masculinity, fem uh, femininity, uh, showing interests uh, parallel to the opposite sex. He was high and uh, shy and introverted. Uh, that's the guy. That's the guy. Um, I'm so impressed. And uh, it talks about T scores, and you, you have to have T scores above 65 according to uh, common standard to uh, have an issue. And he tickled 65 with uh, being shy, but he didn't get there. All his other scores are comfortably below that. And then uh, malingering. Uh, clearly, he doesn't think much of this. The, the last sentence here, uh, as one psychologist said, uh, the Lee's Haley fake bad scale is, quote, great for insurance companies, end quote. Oh, no, comma, uh, but not great for people. And of course, uh, people are what's important. Um, these scales. Uh, here's another one that's uh, that's in the common domain, not usually used in psychology. Counselors like it, businesses like it, uh, people who were trained uh, to supervise, uh, like people in student government often take this, the Myers-Briggs. Um, and I see this on my Facebook feed. Uh, to the um, it's given a lot, but um, it's not very reliable. And if it's not reliable, uh, what what's, what do you have? Um, so thus, despite its popularity with some counselors and therapists today, Myers Briggs is mostly ignored by researchers studying personality. Uh, not because we're having a fight with counselors uh, and therapists, it's that the Myers-Briggs just is not a useful assessment tool. Uh, biology, uh, are there genetic influences? And we've seen uh, earlier in the chapter about uh, assessing, uh, assessing heritability. And there we go, 14.12. Heritability of the big five personality traits. And you can see they're, you know, floating between just a shade under 50, uh, 0.5 to uh, 60 or 0.6. Uh, so none of those indicate that heritability, heritability uh, defines you, but uh, all of those indicate that heritability is an issue uh, that should be uh, considered when you're dealing with personality uh, issues, which is one of the reasons I was studying it and looking at faces, but that's another story. Um, the genetic influence on personality and the notion that evolution favors diversity, uh, I have to agree with that. And remember the uh, Gilgamesh and his friend, who I've forgotten the name of already. Um, if we were all clones of each other uh, in our personality uh, traits, uh, we would probably be a lot less productive. Uh, we are better off having diverse populations uh, where people can, who are, uh, can fill different niches. And uh, now the issue is, is it a lifelong characteristic in the uh, 
the title sort of gives away that, yeah, there is uh, uh, evidence that people have different temperaments and they are pretty long lasting. And there's, uh, Kagan, yes, Kagan did uh, good research on infant uh, reactivity and uh, later personality. And there's a nice graphic. So you have a highly reactive baby, you have a moderately active baby and uh, low reactive babies and what they tend to turn into. Again, you know, this is not written in stone, um, but it, uh, you know, averages. And uh, a clinical psychologist I did uh, mouse research on was very interested in trying to uh, do sort of therapy on mice to take very nervous mice and help them develop into less nervous adult, adults. So um, highly reactive as adults, emotionally less stable, introverted, conscientious, uh, moderate, which is most people, very variable, and then low reactive, emotionally stable, extroverted, and carefree. Sign me up. Um, So oh, that's uh, good research, but again, it's it's not written in stone. Uh, people uh, are are not stuck with the way they were. They can they can vary. And speaking of varying, uh, the, the person situation de uh, debate. Um, the the bottom part of that paragraph says. Variability within a person is as great as the variability across. Such data suggests that personality does not matter as much as the environment. Uh, that's a pretty strong statement, but um, seems to be true. And uh, that relates to the last chapter we're going to deal with personality. There we go. Look at that correlation, man. Uh, so that's reliability. Uh, test retest. Uh, that correlation is probably high point eight. Um, you know, so you know these. This this is not a flaky area. Uh, real science is being done here by people who understand uh, science, uh, but it's you know not all genes. It's not all traits. Uh, interactionist uh, situation is important. It undeniably is. And uh, social influences on personality. And we are reminded of Bandura and the, and the, the doll punching. Uh, that can affect behavior. Um, behaviorism, uh, Skinner. Uh, he had his, he marched to his own drummer. Certainly he didn't like Freud or, and he was anti-theory. Uh, and there's the bottom line. In the end, behaviorists lost the campaign to explain personality as nothing more than learned response tendencies. Uh, Skinner lost a lot of battles, uh, which is uh, uh, too bad for Skinner, but uh, science prevails, not theorists, unless you're Freud and people still believe in you. Uh, cognitive psychology, you may remember, uh, battled it out with Skinner and cognitive psychology one. Uh, locus of control is uh, something we have good data on. And internal control, uh, they perceive themselves to be in control. Uh, they feel in charge of their fate, external control. Uh, they don't. Uh, there were data that people in the South were more likely to uh, be low on internal control uh, and therefore be higher on external control. And allegedly, they were more likely to be killed uh, in a tornado 
because they just waited to see what was up for them that day. You know, if my number's up, my number's up, what can I do? That's external locus of control uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, there's Bandura again, self-efficacy. Um, and uh, it, social learning is important for that, social modeling. Um, this is sort of related to what my uh, clinical uh, colleague wanted to do with the, uh, with the mice. And, you know, there's a simple diagram. Um, behavior, what are you going to do? The environment affects behavior and behavior affects the environment. Uh, environmental factors, contingencies, uh, stimulation from other people. The environment shapes personality. Personality changes the environment. So uh, round and around we go. I mean, it's more complicated. <clears throat> it would be much easier to believe in the, uh, the God Freud and just go talk to him twice a week for three to five years and dump a bunch of money um, to understand what's going on. Not that you would understand much, but these theories here are based on pretty solid data. Um, Reciprocal determinism, the theory that the three different factors mutually influence each other, uh, personal factors, environmental factors, and the individual's behavior. Uh, Self-esteem. Uh, by the way, uh, that book I pointed you to, uh, House of Cards, uh, that author is not a big fan of self-esteem. Not a big fan at all. Um, the Sylvan Learning Centers used to run ads saying that the first thing they did with children when they came into the learning center was to improve their self-esteem so they could learn better. The data don't support that. What the data do support is if children uh, do better at learning, uh, they feel better about themselves. So there is a relationship between self-esteem and, and learning, but not in the direction that people like to believe that the self-esteem drives the learning. Uh, it, it seems to be more uh, in reverse. Uh, California spent a fortune on self-esteem research, and they couldn't even find correlations with things. Uh, it, 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 and every chapter in the report started with correlation does not prove causation. Oh yeah, that's so true. Uh, and then they would talk about what they had spent years researching self-esteem and they'd say, well, we didn't even find correlations. Well, man, if there is a causal relationship between two variables, you're going to find a correlation and they didn't find it. Um, so there's a uh, continuation of that discussion. Uh, Cross-cultural, uh, certainly cultures have a, uh, an influence on, um, on uh, how people express, or well, on personality uh, variables, uh, but it's not genetic. Uh, as, uh, you know, America is a melting pot, and when people come here to get melted, uh, their personalities are uh, not so much the same as they were in the homeland. Boy, there's uh, an interesting uh, chart, very striking. So you have extroversion and openness, a continuum, low extroversion, high extroversion, and then neuroticism, low and high. And there's America over there with Canadians, uh, high extroversion, relatively uh, low neuroticism, uh, but, oh boy, Japanese, Belgians, French, Russians. Ah, uh, what was up with Croatians and Peruvians? They seem to be uh, floating in the middle there. Um, this is a, a cute chapter, uh, even though Freud annoys me. 
uh, whatever happened to Phineas Gage. So uh, there's a nice discussion of what happened. Uh, there's uh, that picture on the left. Uh, I like photography and I like that technology. Uh, and uh, there are websites that post pictures using that technology. And this picture was on that website and I saw it before people knew who it was. And they, uh, they labeled it originally that this was a, uh, a whaler holding his harpoon. And someone looked at that picture and said, uh, no, you can see the end of this. It's pointy. If you look at a harpoon, the end of it is not pointy. Not, well, it's pointy, but it's got barbs. It's supposed to go in and, and stick. Um, and they looked at that and said to the person who owned the photograph, that's not a harpoon. And uh, they actually suggested that that might be Phineas Gage, uh, because you can see uh, he has an issue on the left side of his face. He's a good looking dude, uh, Phineas. Uh, and the job he had, uh, the railroad engineer, not driving the, uh, the trains, but uh, laying uh, the tracks and blasting things. Uh, that's a very responsible position. And railroads took it extremely seriously and they overbuilt. So this is the tamping iron that went through his skull. And if you look at it, you can see these little highlights, these little spots. Um, I've seen this, it's in that Harvard Museum and uh, physicians and famous people who dealt with him, they signed it. So that's gold uh, guild uh, and signatures on the uh, on the tamping iron and uh there's a graph of i used to have a, an animated uh uh image of this but i i could not find it um but it's a little hard to believe he survived that but he certainly did uh for quite a while and you can see that the damage was pretty much uh, relegated to the prefrontal lobes um a part of the brain that certainly if you're male hasn't grown in yet wait until you're in mid-20s uh women uh have a shot at ha having it uh uh grow in so let me let me show you what i've got here i have here uh Persinius. um this is from Harvard, so it's it's pretty cute, and it's Legos. Is that it? Oh no, it's not. Oh, that's the animation. It, unfortunately, it goes too fast. So the tamping iron, uh, the pointy part, his mouth apparently was open, uh, goes uh, in through his upper jaw, through his eye socket. Um, and then blew out the top of his head. Um, and most of the skull stayed with Phineas. Uh, the skull opened and then closed. Uh, yow. All right, I'm lost. I'm here. Oh, there it's like, I'm sorry, I missed one. So 
he had a very, very responsible position. So if you drive along some Pennsylvania highways, uh, you can see where they have been cut through the side of uh, a hill or a mountain. And you can see these vertical half uh, shafts that go straight down. Uh, and that's what's going on here, but uh, using more manual labor. So they drill a hole, they clear the hole, and they put dynamite down the hole. And Phineas was in charge of uh, the blasting. So he had a custom made tamping iron, uh, pointy at one end for when you needed to point and blunt at the other, other end when you needed to snug things up. So when the explosion occurred, uh, the pointy uh, side of his tamping iron was up and the uh, blunt side was, was down. That's pretty accurate. Um, we've looked at, no, we look at this one. Dude, look at the size of that tamping iron. And you can see that the one end is pointed and the other end is blunt. And in the uh, Harvard Museum, I don't know if you ever watch samurai movies, I used to be obsessed. Uh, the skull is on a little platform and in front of it, like a samurai sword, uh, that tamping iron is sitting there uh, horizontal. Uh, in this picture, the tamping iron uh, doesn't look like it's been 
written on in gold. Uh, here, it'll be the big five. I don't know if this adds much. Oh, yeah. So there's different uh, assessments. Uh, Bouchard uh, is a very big uh, name in these areas. Um, the, only, the only thing that seems a little apart are the two measurements of neuroticism. But still, they're, they're exactly where you would expect them uh, to be. And do non-humans have personalities? This is an interesting piece of research. And uh, they certainly do have differences that you could call personalities. And uh, uh, even fish. And that's the end of this chapter. Thanks for dropping by. One more and we are done.